If you do dormant feeding fertilizer with slow release, or if you go out, say, with a single application of a very long, slow release fertilizer like a polymer coated urea, is there any concern there about running off the nutrient? And what will happen a lot of times is the manufacturer or distributor, or really the distributor, will say, oh, no, 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 it won't run off anywhere. It doesn't float. I've heard that before. For those of you who don't know, I used to work for a distributor who sold polymer coated ureas, sold polyon. And I'll never forget, I was in a, a leadership meeting, the upper management leadership meeting one, one time. There, there was a conversation at the, on the table with the owner and all the cell, the VPs and everything there. They're talking about this floating issue with, with, poly, poly, with the polymer coated urea at the time. And the director of research was saying, it doesn't float, it doesn't float. And they're saying, we're keep hearing things that this stuff floats off. And so the director of research, while we're in a meeting, walks out the, the meeting room right into the warehouse, which was on the other side of the wall from the meeting room, goes out and gets a cup of polyon and a cup of water and has the water there and in front of the, the, the leadership, the upper management leadership team, dumps the polyon in the water and like half of it floated. And he goes, oh, I guess it floats. <laughs> so it does float, polymer coated ureas float, Sulfur coated ureas can float, natural organics can float. And so it is a concern of these really heavy applications of slow release materials in terms of them moving off the surface. That's the major concern. And one way that you can easily do this is just simply go and see this. Here's a picture of a, that I got from a colleague or a peer of mine at Michigan State. And you can see these polymer prills, these green prills on this cart path where this golf cart is on the cart path and they fertilized it. And you see all these little green prills all over the asphalt here. And you could say, well, then maybe that was just spread on the cart path. It didn't actually float off the, the turf surface onto the cart path. You could say that in this particular photograph, but there's a lot on the cart path. They didn't blow it off or it, or it floated on the cart path. There's another photograph here where you see the green BBs just going right down the cart path here, forming uh, little lines where the water channels are, lines of fertilizer where the water channels are. And again, more uh, observational evidence that Indeed, these fertilizers do float. If you don't believe those two photographs, this is one of the worst cases I've ever seen of floating green BBs, in this case, polyon, on, an, on a growing, on an establishment of Bermuda grass. So you can go out with one application of a heavy, heavy rate on during a growing and not have to do it again. True. But if it rains or it, when in growing, you're already watering a lot of, uh, you're putting a lot of water on, okay? And you get any water movement across that surface, this is what can happen. All these green BBs that you put out there are now floating off and settling off, just like you see seed. When you put seed out and it rains, you see all the seeds float down to the end. It's the exact same thing. You can also get some jars. Here's some jars of just water. And you put sulfur coated urea in one jar and organic, natural organics. In this case, it's millorganite in another jar and you'll see them float. Not all of it, but some of it will float. So the point is, is, is if there's a concern that these high heavy rates may result in offsite movement of the fertilizer preel, I'm here to tell you, yes, that can happen. And if it rains heavily soon after you put it out, it very, very likely will happen. There's very little debate on that, at least among the scientists, the manufacturers and distributors, of course, will argue that it won't. It will. I'm showing you pictures on the screen right now that it, those fertilizers will float. Will there be any value or advantage to going out with these very, very slow release materials, 90, 120 day products at high rates if it doesn't float or if it doesn't run off? Absolutely. I've done a lot of work with slow release materials, particularly polymer coated ureas, and you can find that very specific rate in coating that you need to put out once one application for the year or one application for, an, for a grow in, but you better have 100% control of the water. And I mean, even rainfall, especially during a grow in when you don't have a lot of turf coverage, because you're very, very likely going to lose a lot of that offsite. And even if you lose only say 10 or 20% of it offsite, when you went in a grow in, you might've put in five pounds or four pounds of nitrogen. And that's a lot of nitrogen washing off. So it is a very, real risk of off-site movement of these heavy fertilizer applications from floating and running off the surface. And that was, those, uh, those were in Michigan. I have documented evidence in Florida where it's just flat and sandy. So you don't have a lot of uh, hills to create a lot of momentum of the water. And a lot of the water in South Florida will go straight through the soil because it's just sugar sand. And even in those cases, there's still documented evidence that the, the prills can float off 
So agronomically, you can do it. You can put out these slow release materials and get it to last a very, very long time if you do it at the right time at the right rate and so forth. But you are greatly, greatly increasing the risk of offsite movement of those fertilizer particles. There's no doubt, no doubt. If you have if you have 100% control of the water, I'm not concerned about it. But I don't know anybody that has 100% control of the rain. So I I would be very, very careful about putting out these really high doses. When I mean a high doses, I mean anything greater than two pounds of nitrogen per application. If you're putting out these really, really high doses of slow release materials, thinking you're gonna get six months out of it, eight months out of, um, out of it, agronomically, if you do it correctly, the answer is very likely you will. But the environmental risk is also extremely high when you do that. So I'm all good with it, but you better have control over the situation. You better know exactly what you're doing before you go down the <laughs>